Good morning, everybody. It is Erin Reed, and I'm back again live today. And the kids and I had a blast playing with these little fun balloon things. There's a whole bunch of balloons that were attached at the end of this. You add this to your water hose, fills up the balloons, pops off, and you can have a water balloon fight. And after we're done, these little sticky things were left over. I was like, oh my gosh, these would be so cool to create with. And so I'm going to show you guys eight different background techniques that you guys can use with paint. Now I'm using a watercolor paint from Plaid. Um, this is folk art paint, but it's by Plaid. And I'm just, I picked two colors, my two favorite colors, blues and greens, uh, ultramarine and sap green. And we're gonna blend the two different colors and then just do very, very simple, clean and simple cards with the background papers that we are creating with today. So what I've done is I've done a full paint, meaning it's just straight paint. You could always use just use regular acrylic. And then I have some that we are doing that is a watercolor, meaning that I've just added water because this is a watercolor paint. So it can really thin down nicely. So this is just a good watercolor. And I need to test this eventually. And then over here I have the green. So I'm just blending it with just tap water, nothing fancy and adding the water in. You can make it as thick or as thin as you want. It is totally up to you. I think that I've made this a little thin, but that's okay. It's it's just a light look that you're kind of giving. So if you want a little bit more of a brilliant color, you do less water. If you want more of a bright color, do more water. And then you have your straws. Now in the pack that we got, we actually got ours at Costco, but they're all over the place. We live in Texas and there's HEB where you can find these. I've seen them in packs of three. We got one that had a pack with it had like 10 of these in there. So there's a ton of them. I'm gonna switch my thing so I can see my full chat, not just my top chat. There we go, now I'm into live chat. So good morning everybody who just jumped in. We are gonna create eight different background techniques with these fun straws. So simple one first, I'm gonna move this off. Like again, I use these two colors of paint and I'm gonna show you how to make the background. So just cut some papers here and I'm gonna show you one. And then we're gonna go in and I'm gonna show you what you can do with that in terms of, I've done eight different card designs to go with the technique I'm gonna show you today. So it's gonna be a little bit of some painting going on and then we're gonna show you how to use that in a card. So the first one we're gonna do is our traditional, uh, so heads up, sorry, a little scatterbrain today. I have designated, and I made it simple, blue is for blue, green is for green, because I already had the colors. So anytime I'm dipping into green, I'm gonna use my green straws, and anytime I'm dipping into blue, I'm gonna use my blue straws. And then I have one that I'm keeping clean, and I made sure I blew into it to make sure that there was no water, because we did connect this up to the hose to fill the water balloons. So I blew it out, it's been dry, and I still have some extras, and my kids are wanting to play and do this, so I'm just, showing you that there is a ton. I mean, you can pick a ton of different colors, but you guys know blue and green are my favorites. So this is what I have so far. So I'm just checking to see if anybody's talking yet. So my first one we're gonna do, and we're actually not gonna do, it's very, very simplistic. It's just a splatter effect. So I'm gonna take this into my wet, and I had my list somewhere, I think it's gone. Oh, no, I hope my list of all my things is gone, <laughs> it's okay. So I'm just taking it and I'm just doing a splatter effect. Traditional, look at that. I'm just, I dipped it in the water and I'm just running it across. So I know that you guys know how to do that. You can dip it into a paintbrush and splatter it. I just feel like you get cooler drops. Um, I'm not gonna dip it into the blue. And I kind of tap it off to the edge and then I flick. Now you could also flick if you wanna get more, you know, kind of hardcore on it, or you can just, but look, look how fun that is. And then you can decide, okay, well, I want a little bit more green on here. And you can play with the colors on this. So I just cut this down to a five and a, five and a quarter by four inch sheet. And I can always trim it down. So I want to go right to the edge. I really want to go right to the edge of this. And look, I'm getting tiny splatters, big splatters. And this is just one of the eight techniques I'm going to show you guys. There's a lot more to come. Green and green. <laughs> Making sure I go green into green. You could also... Kind of have like a tapping station. There's that. So you guys get the idea, right? So, oops, tap, tap. And then there we go. So this is using the watercolor version and this is the background. Okay, so uh, you know what I didn't get? I didn't get any kind of, all right, well, we're gonna do this because I don't have any other genius idea of how to keep my, I just got this all painty and gross and I don't wanna completely ruin it. So what I've done here is I've created a card. Now I made my splatters much bigger. Oh, no, that's a different one. Sorry. 
trying to grab all the ones that we've done. Here we go. This is the one. There's sometimes they look a little similar and they look a little different. So here's the one that goes with this. I just cut off a small little section here and I'm just doing a very, very simplistic card. Just really pretty. Whoops. Got to go the right direction. All right. So I'm just lining this up on an A2 size card. I want to go about here with that. And I just cut the paper and this is actually what the rest of it looked like. So if you were looking, this was the rest of those splatters that I had there and you want to let it air dry. I had, um, I didn't water my colors down as much. That's why they look to be a little bit of a different, like a darker green because I didn't water them down as heavily as the um, one we just did together. And so there was a ton left over. You could totally get away with doing a much bigger mat on there, but I just think it looks really pretty just like that. And then I hope there it is. I have so much stuff on my desk. And then I have my Xyron and I'm gonna run my, I just die cut out a thanks. Truly, there's only three colors we're using here. Four colors, sorry, white, black, and then the background is the blue and the green. So you can take a beautiful background and any of the backgrounds we are doing today, you could do with this card design. And I kind of, you could interchange them all, mix and match them. Um, I did do some where I thought the, like this, there's a lot of white space still in the card. So you could totally get away with um, having that white space. All right, I think I'm gonna go a little further down with this. Go to there. And I just have a little thanks that we're gonna pop right there. So I'm sorry if there's gonna be any noises going in the background. Kids are home, we are on summer break. I told them, be quiet. I'll have to clean that up later, but you guys get the idea. So that's our first card, very simple. You could also put the thanks inside if you wanted to, lots of options. I'm just kind of popping on top, but you could definitely put it inside of here. I have another thanks just to show you guys that it would look really pretty in there. You know what? I'm gonna do that, it's bugging me. So it means I gotta move because I made a big mess. Oh, and I tore that. Excuse the little doodads here. My paint, my finger was painty. So I was trying to get rid of some of the little cobwebs from the Xyron and now I could do one of two things. I could go ahead and recut a background card. <laughs> I could recut the thanks. Ah, I'm stuck. This is what you get for lives, right? I originally had it sitting in there. Okay, so I think I can just pop this up. No, it's gonna be a mess. I'll redo it on another card, but I wanna show you what it looks like. And then I'm probably gonna put a different thanks on here. I am, I'm gonna do a different thanks. I have the thanks already here and I'm gonna use a wet glue instead just for grins and giggles, which I have just, sorry, right off here. Mostly because I don't wanna make any kind of mistakes here. You know what, we're gonna flip it over so you guys get a clean card. Problem solved, bump this down to the bottom. I had in my head, I didn't take like a picture. Usually if I have a design for a card, I will take a picture of all the cards and go, this is what I wanna do. I love my Xyron for stuff, but this actually has way too many little holes. So there's goods and bad things and why I use different. So why, why would I use a wet glue for this versus my uh, sticker maker, which I did try to use. Mostly because there's a lot of little holes and you get those little cobwebs. So if I don't wanna see those little cobwebs or anything, then this is what I'm gonna use. And it sticks down just perfectly. And so there's the thanks. And so there we go. Easy peasy right there. And then if I wanted to, I could do like a stitching border. I might go back after the video is over and tweak some stuff, but I'm loving just the cleanness of this and just leaving it. So that is the first card with the first technique, watercolor with the splatter onto the paper. And this was what the paper looked like to begin with. You could also use this as an entire matte background if you wanted to, which we are doing for some of the cards. So this is the first card and the first background. Let me de pick off my background here. I hope you guys are having a great day. It is kind of cool here right now. It's not super, super wet. Um, it's been wet and we had a massive storm come through the other day. It's crazy business. All right, second one I'm gonna show you is you get back into the watercolor again and I'm just gonna lightly tap and then this time you blow. So you get a different splatter effect. And because this is a wetter solution that I used last time, I mean, it's thinner, it's gonna get a different kind of a feel. See, we got bigger drops. So it's a little bit of that splatterness. 
and kind of play around with it. So it's not so uniform. Look at the difference. So here, a lot more uniform. Here, a lot more loose splatters and kind of all over the place. So it really depends on what you're going for here. So here's another one. So you just kind of play with it. I'm just dabbing it in, tap, 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 and blow. And sometimes you get these little puddles. So it's just a very fun kind of a background. Let me do another one. I was having fun the past couple of days coming up with all these cool techniques. <laughs> My kids are like, Mom, I want to try it. I'm like, yeah, you know what? It's just good, fun arts. Why not? So really cool splatter technique. This is another version. I had, I, I stole my thanks. <laughs> I've got to redo a new thanks. So this is the background that I made from that. I did much bigger splots. And again, it's darker because I didn't add as much water to the solution that I did. So you can see there's bigger splatters there. There's darker spots. And this, now I let all these air dry. I did not get my heat gun out for any of this. I didn't do anything. I just let it sit. And I pretty much let it sit overnight to come up with um, and cut the paper. It warps a tiny bit, I will have to say. And I'm just using regular old copy paper, not copy paper, sorry. Nina white cardstock paper. I would gladly trade you a storm for the heat advisory. Yeah, well, we get into heat advisories too. So I can't say that we don't get that. Um, Unfortunately, our storm was so severe, we actually had a couple of deaths, which was not good. I'm not sure. <laughs> so I might try the heat advisory. I'm sure there's some deaths to the heat advisory. So I can't say that that's not a, you know, nothing can happen there either. All right. So with that card, there we go. So I'm just doing very, very simplistic layers. Imagine there's a thanks. I'm going to go back and I'll die cut out the thanks too. Simple, simple layers. I love the look of the black mat with these. I just think it looks so smart. And I ran out of regular old black paper. So I have all this black paper with uh, designs on the background. But because I have such crazy backgrounds, they're not super crazy. Fun backgrounds, I'll take that. Fun backgrounds. I didn't want to go too crazy with all the different colors and stuff like that. So I'm just kind of moving the card around a little bit because it does warp a tiny bit because I added some water to the paper. So you could do a watercolor paper. I just pulled out my standard, you know, I'm not centered, so I'm ripping and recentering real fast. Oops, there we go. And then I just have a sheet of white and then I'm putting that on my black. And this was gonna go right, you know, I might go in the corner here. And then that black thanks that we used in the previous card. So imagine the thanks, I stole it off the card, but I'll redo it going right here. And you could pop this up with pop dots. You know what? I actually have some right here. So we're going to pop this up and I'll just recut out that thanks. I have the thanks and you know, what? I might have some black paint. I can do it real fast. Two seconds for me to do the joys of lives. <laughs> so I'll just pop this up in the corner. Go with this corner. I like this corner. So it's just very fun cards. Here we go. And then let me get my thanks out. So I have my little magnetic sheet here of all the dyes I've been using. So I just use a star, I have a thanks, and I have a hello, and some circles that we're working with. Those are the simplistic shapes that I have de been dealing with here. And I think I have some black paper just, I always keep, so here, look, I always keep like little loose sheets of paper just off to the side here. So if I ever need another sheet, and I'll throw this back because what if I need it again? And then I can just die cut out this little thing. So I have all my stuff sitting right here. So. so I'm sorry I'm a little bit later getting on today. We are in summer, summer vacation, and things around here. We have a camp that we're going to. It's actually quite late at night. We don't get home until like 9.30. It's crazy business. And then we're hungry. Well, the kids are hungry. I've been home. But the kids are hungry and so by the time we get to bed it's almost close to like 11 or 12 because they've eaten and, and then they're all kinds of awake and it's summer so it's not a big deal but uh it pushes our waking up in the morning a little bit later than normal <laughs> so it tends to wreak havoc with i'm gonna get on usually i get on at nine um i don't even think i was fully awake at nine <laughs> <laughs> next week I'll be earlier because the kids have a morning camp and I have to pick them up um, by a certain time in the day. So I have to be done with my live event by then. So I think I'm going to be going live at, back at my, I need to double check what time 
um, I have to drop them off. So it's either going to be nine or 10 o'clock that I'll be going live. So there it is. Super simple, right? Put my thing back on my die. So that is the second card. Oh, you love the spider look. I'm so good. Uh, nothing is wrong. Just get to play and great outcome for projects. Yes. Oh, hi, Saskatoon. Hi, Judy. <laughs> I love my Saskatoon. All right. I have an affinity for Saskatchewan. So that's where my family's from. I wasn't born there, but my parents and all everybody else was born there. Okay, so we've done two techniques. Third technique, we are going to be using the, okay, I'm going to rethink. Oh, so this one is an old-fashioned one that people have been doing for a long, long time. It's nothing new. I'm going to take some of my paint here. Here we go. And I'm going to add, you really want to get some water on here. So you have to start off with a little bit of a brush to transfer. I hope you guys are probably knowing where I'm going to go with this. But here we go. So I'm just adding my paint. And I do I kind of start off with like a star. And I'm not fully centered. And this is where you take the dry one and you're going to do the blowing technique. So you guys remember this when you were kids, you took a straw. Well, guess what? You've got like 40 straws attached to this. So you get even more kind of a splattered effect. At least I think so. And so you get that really cool kind of Look at that. So I'm just doing the blue so far, but we're going to come back in with the green. And you get little ones, you get bigger ones. And there's nothing to say that any of the techniques I'm showing you with this cool straw thing, this balloon thing, you could come in and add splatters to that. So let's do one more. I want a nice big blue. So I got to get more water on here. So I really want it to, to go across. It looks almost like a, like a sea star or something. If you did it in certain colors, it would almost look like a firework. So now I'm going to come in with the green and go over top of it. And when you do specifically this one, I would always pick colors that would not make mud or really make sure it dries or the colors. And notice I went kind of in between. The colors you pick up don't um, reactivate when you get them wet. So if you're going to mix, for instance, blue and red, because those would make mud, those would make brown. And you always have to kind of come back and add more color. The, I'm not inventing this. This is nothing new. But the idea of using out this kind of fun straw. So I'm, almost, I'm keeping this in my tool repertoire, let me tell you. Because I love some of the fun things that you can do with it. I mean, my kids were like, Mom, you can totally use this fun thing. And I'm like, yes, I can. So just kind of look at that cool thing. You could even go further and turn this kind of into a flower. You could have all kinds of fun. I need a little bit more water on this. Now, do you have to use this for cards? No, you could totally use this in an art journal. You could use this on a scrapbook page. I mean, this concept, you could have a ton of fun with it. Just any of these concepts. A little bit of breathing. I gave myself a little winded. Oh my gosh. I'm going to add a little bit more water. I want this to come all the way to the edge. So also, if you cut this on a smaller sheet, I mean, I'm de definitely getting this pretty wet, but you see the idea. It looks really cool, right? So for that one, let's turn over here and dry. It's just to kind of show you. Bring out a paper again. So that was what we started with. Again, a clean one. This is one that I've only, I've never dipped in paint or done anything with the paint. It's the only one where you have to blow. That just sounds bad. <laughs> again, I used a much darker color when I was doing my painting. Um, so that's why the color is more. So I, I did this on purpose to show you more saturated, less saturated. And this time it actually took the paint and blew it in another direction. Yeah, so what? Totally works. All right, so get this on here. And like I said, I'm very, very simple designs. You know, all the little flip flop cards I've been making, each one of the pages inside of a flip flop could be one of these new paint designs. I mean, they, they really are fun. So you could reorientate this any way you want. And I'm just adding a little hello here in the corner. So what I do is my, uh, oh, there it is. My glue is right there. So I don't have any supply links up yet, but I will, as soon as I'm done with the video, I'll take nicer pictures of everything. You know, I don't tend to make a whole lot prior to the video, so there's not a whole lot I can put up in terms of a picture. 
but you get the idea of where we're going. So it's a little warped, but it's not too bad. Again, it's probably because I use just the Nina white paper, but look at that. Isn't that fun? I just think they're cool. So just to recap for anybody who's just joined us, we've done three techniques so far. We've done a blowing splatter technique to make that card. We've done just a splatter technique where you kind of flick it with the paint in, this is all watercolor now. So with the watercolor, and then we've done the blowing technique. So three fun techniques, just using the straws and the watercolor paint. So with just some black and white paper and some simple dyes. All right, so the next one I'm gonna show you is going to be using the regular paint. So I'm gonna pull this back off again. Get and get my mat back out. And then we are going to take this. All right, so move off my watercolor. Got my little stash on the ground here. Okay, so the next one we're gonna show you, oh no, this one is using the wet one as well. So you can take your paintbrush in, and this one's kind of cool, and you can drag. Now, you get this cool cross hatch. And then I can come in with, the remember, green for green, blue for blue. Get a little bit of the paint off, because it kind of gets stuck inside, if you can tell. It's already starting to seep inside, that's the other fun thing fun thing, sorry, is that it, the water kind of goes up inside with a little capillary action happening here, a little science for you guys. And so there is enough liquid in there. So I'm just kind of seeping out just a tiny bit of it and therefore it transfers. So if you don't want it to be so saturated like this, you just want the cool little crosshairs. And if you flatten it out a little bit, like I'm kind of doing, you can get broader strokes. Now the fun thing is, is that the paper is gonna start working with you. You're kind of reactivating some of the fibers in the paper. So you're going to start etching the paper with little straws if you get it saturated enough, depending on how far you want to go. You could go really light and keep it just light like this, or you can add more color and start. And I'm literally pulling up some of the paper here and kind of adding texture to the paper and just keep, I'm just doing a cross, 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 cross. I'll add a little more blue to this one. So you can really have fun and kind of go crazy with this. And oops, see, and I've really saturated this paper now. I'm almost kind of creating my own paper and getting it wet and paper will dry. I mean, that's how they make paper. You have to get it wet. And I really want to see some of those designs. I've kind of got over a little overboard on this. I went a little nuts, but you kind of see the coolness of the background. So it's, you can go really light and keep it very simple right here, or you can super saturate it. So it really depends on where you're going. For these card, so now that we know what technique we're using, let's move this off the side. So that's what I did with this guy. So I did a really, so this has been dried. It's got some texture to it. Again, it's a little bit warped because we got the paper really wet. So you can see a little bit of some lighter. I really wanted some color on this and you can see that cross hatch. Let's see if you guys can see. Oh yeah, you guys can see it. Look at all that design on there and you can feel the texture with it. That's the fun thing because it's like we scraped part of the top of the layer of the water off, of the paper off because it got so wet with the water, which I think is kind of fun. All right, so go ahead and layer these down real fast. And then I gotta do a tiny bit of a cut on this one. And I'm not going to add anything fancy to my cards yet, but after the fact, I'm going to go back and probably add some sequins and some little pearl drops and things like that. So I did pull out, I'm not going to do it yet, but I added, like I pulled out some enamel dots. I thought the colors just went really well with what we had. And so I'm just going to kind of play and add some little stuff here and there. All right. I'm gonna add a little bit of a diagonal. So I just want a little something, and then we're gonna cut it off. So I have to grab my paper trimmer here in a minute. So I'm just coming into the side, deciding kind of how much have an angle I want here, right there. And then, oh, you know what? I'm gonna do that to just this one. Being very indecisive today. That's okay. Got a paper trimmer. I know, it's, it's so fun when I saw this cool thing and there's, we're only halfway through, there's still four more. <laughs> That's the cool thing. All right, I'm just cutting off my excess of the white here. So I'm putting it back inside my paper trimmer, I'm lining it back up. This is how you can get kind of fun um, angles here. And there's another card that's coming up and I did the exact same thing. I just already pre-cut it. 
So, cause I didn't want to, if I showed you once and I've showed you twice. So that's how I got this cool angle on here, but it matches perfectly. So there is that, pull this out, get rid of this. I'm sure there's other ways that people do it. That's how I do it. Okay, since I pulled off my paper, I'm gonna reapply it, put it on my mats. I love mats. Some people don't like using mats. I can't see, cause I got black on black. I can't tell if I'm lined up or not. Here, I'll do this. <laughs> it's my life easier. <laughs> But I just love that black matte look. Or it could be a white matte on a black. You know, it really depends. Depends on what you're going for. So again, I let all of these dry overnight. So even this guy, I would let dry overnight. Very different look. I did a lot more blue instead of the greens. But it's just kind of this different background. And that, that was the point of all this. What are some fun backgrounds? What are some things I can do to make it look different? And then just this little hello right here. Here's my glue. I keep losing my glue little dots so i said i will come back and add little enamel dots and little sequins and little bling and stuff like that maybe adding some stitching with my pen but that was not those are just the final touches so i'm just gonna leave that add a little too much glue but you get the idea so just a fun little hello and again you could pick any of the backgrounds that we are doing but you could totally do the splatter background on the back side of the hello you could do this background on the back side of that you could take this and add to the background you, i mean it's just simplicity of design showing kind of where you can go with the cards. So that's the next one and showing how to use the background. All right, next one, checking on down. All right, we are done with the watercolor. So we learned four techniques of the watercolor. We did the splatter, we did the blowing splatter, we did the blowing to make the spider or flower or whatever, and then we did the crosshatch thing. So now you can do the same thing in terms of the crosshatch, but instead of a crosshatch, because I wanted to show you a little bit different, you make spirals. I'm dipping into the regular paint now. Full body paint, make sure I have it on there. And now, you make spirals. <laughs> I don't have enough on there. The paint's been sitting for a little while. I might need to add some more paint. Oh, now I added too much. Go we'll figure. But it's the same concept. You're seeing that design in there, and you can go full force. I know it's loud. I'm sorry, guys. But look at that. Isn't that cool? It's just this really, really neat background, I thought. So you're getting the paint on there. And then you can come in with the green. Now, I have not dipped into the green at all yet. So, and then add some of the green. You could totally just do one color. I love the kind of the mix of the colors. So it really saturated. You could cut these up into smaller pieces. You could do this and then die cut out a word with it. That's coming. I'm going to show you how we did that actually on this card. <laughs> Lovely segue, isn't it? So, and then you could come in and you could start doing like fancy designs. Like I'm just doing spirals, but just think you can come and you could do, you know, all kinds of cool stuff. So just like a kind of a fun grass or something. I don't know. I was just playing. Man, I got a stupid ad in front of this. Um, you love that it doesn't, oh, it, yeah, it doesn't flake 100% flat because it's paint and we're adding a lot of paper. So there's a little bit of warpiness going on here. So anyway, but you get the idea. So you, there is definitely kind of like, I'm getting a little bit overkill over here, but that's just so cool. I just think that's so fun. I don't know. I could sit there and just do like a whole bunch of those. And again, if you got to be careful about the colors that you're doing, you want to do is that's why it's picked blues and greens because they could blend and then you get cool colors and you can see like the layers underneath and you could let this dry and then go over top with another color, but it would reactivate some of it depending on what kind of paint you're using. It would reactivate, but that is that one. I don't know what I'm going to call that. The spirally swirly one squiggles, worms, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> crazy fun. It's the crazy one. <laughs> So I did a little bit differently here. I didn't go, I left some more white, but I mean, you can tell here I went full out, covered the entire thing. And this, I left a little bit more white. So it depends on what you want and where you're kind of going. And then for this, 
I did die cut out again. It's got a lot more white in it, but I did die cut out um, the word from the background, which I thought was pretty as well. But you can't put that on top of that. You have to have something to make it pop. So I just die cut on the little black. I'm so guys, you like this. I was just having fun. It's been mulling in my head ever since we did this. We had some guests, which is why I couldn't go live last week. We had some guests staying with us. Oh, see here I was playing with just the blue and I didn't like the blue as much. So I added the blue and green. But the blue, you know what? It doesn't actually doesn't look too bad. It looks kind of pretty, but I already added the paint down on there. So whatever. So play with it. Have some fun with it. Uh, what if you don't have these little things? Well, I'm not sure. I guess you could get a whole bunch of little tiny stir stick straws and like tape them together or um, rubber band them together. But these are really nice because I don't have to worry about um, them falling apart because they're already connected, which I think is great. All right. So let me do my little thanks here. Now, the thanks die came from Simon Says Stamp. It's one of their dies. And then the hello die came from a company I picked up from China. And it took a little while to get here, but the die has been running great. And it's not one of those AliExpress kind of things. Um, I hunted everywhere before I ordered anything from them to see if they were ripping any company off. And I typed in the most specific things. and I couldn't find anything. So that's this hello stamp here, right here. And you know, everybody's got a hello stamp. Everybody has a thanks stamp. It just depends on what you like. So there's the other background technique here. Cool. Kind of fun. All right. The next one is kind of something a little similar. All right. This one I think is cool. So and we're going to do two different versions of the same thing. The first one is just a direct, I'm getting all these kinds of painting, just taking and dab and then making dots just making dots lots of dots little dots not so many dots just having fun with the dots and going all over you can go as little or as much as you want it depends you know, if you kind of let it go to the point where there's not as much paint on there, you get these cool, almost like you can see the little circles on there, which I think is fun. And you don't have to worry about how you're holding it because you're just trying to get the dots on there. And I'm switching. You could totally just do one color or you can come in and add your second color. And you can do little hints. So it's just a kind of a cool background technique. So, and keep, if you're wanting just the dots and not, you know, to, to make streaks and stuff, make sure you just come down and pounce back up because you don't want to make a different technique, which we're going to do here in a minute. So believe me, I've been playing with everything here. <laughs> so, and you can go as fun or as little as you want with that and just kind of playing around. It gets addicting. I tell you what coming, oops, see, look, I went too hard. I splattered. I got to go straight down. So that's an oopsie. You cover that up with something. But that this is just techniques to show you where I was going. So that is another one. Here, let me move my squiggles and my watercolor one off to the side. So there is dots for lack of a better term. Oops, sorry guys, I didn't mean to hit that camera. Dots for lack of a better term. And so here is the dry version of the dots. Just like this. So as you can tell, it's the same thing. I didn't make a little oopsie right there. And I am just going to add a layer of paper to the background here. So putting the back, there we go, the black. And then adding my little mat here. And this didn't take, because there's hardly any paint on there, this technique, and then the next one I'm gonna show you, and then the one after the last one I'm gonna show you, they um, went real fast. They dried within 20 minutes or so. And because you're adding, it's got a little bit of a texture to it. I just think it's kind of fun. All right, so then I just took, and it's the same technique I showed you before. I laid the sheet of paper on here and I put a little dab of glue. I laid the sheet of paper on there and then took it to my paper trimmer and cut it. So I made sure it was a much longer, this black sheet right here. And that's how you get that kind of cool diagonal. So I just figured if you guys saw me do it once, you didn't need to see me do it again. I really wanted some of these backgrounds to shine and be the focal point. So I kept the rest of the design very, very simple. And then just a little die cut thing. Oop, that's got a little boo-boo in there that I need to pop out. See if I can get my finger to do it. 
I have my po here's my pokey tool. It's right there. There's a story that goes with my little pokey tool. It's kind of funny. Um, when I was doing, I used to teach high school biology and I was just starting to get into crafting and scrapbooking and brads were a really big deal about putting brads on your scrapbooking. And so you had to poke a hole and I was, remember I was doing our dissections. Yes, I did. We did dissections. Um, these are our dissecting probes. <laughs> So I asked my department head, I was like, hey, we have these really cool probes and I'd like to buy a package. And she's like, for what? I'm like for crafting. <laughs> you know how many times I've used this to weed? Now it's using weeding dyes. I still sometimes poke holes. I did not use used ones. I asked for a clean package, but they're really inexpensive. So don't necessarily always think in like, especially like with the tools I'm using right now for all these cool backgrounds, look outside the box and see how something can work, but you don't have to buy the what quote unquote name brand of something to get the same results. So my dissecting probe, and you can see this thing has been battered and bruised. I bought 10 of them, granted probably a little cheaper because it was through my you know department head. And so we got the order for the school. I paid her back, it was a buck for 10. And I still have some brand new ones. I stopped teaching 10 years ago. <laughs> so still have them, they're still going strong and they're still rocking it. So anyway. So there is that. I love that. So there it is. Clean and simple little things. There we go. All right. Now, the next one I think is so much fun. It's very similar to what we just did, except we're going to add it as a mask. So I duck, die cut out a star, just a plain old star. And I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive just in the corner. It's not going to stay on there very long. And I'm going to put this right. So I need to get rid of my black sheet of paper. Right. Oh, God, I keep hitting that camera. I am so sorry, everybody. Probably looks like a herd of something coming through every time I hit that. All right, so center this on here, wherever you feel like you want to have it centered. There we go. So there's that. And then I'm just going to do this in blue. I originally thought of doing it in blue and green, and then it's going to act as your mask. So you're going to come in and remember, just straight down pounce and really get close to the edge. I need to add some more paint in here. So for those that have jumped in and joined us, that we're using a watercolor acrylic paint. It's by Plaid, but regular old paint would work just fine, acrylic paint. I like it because it does have the watercolor look to it. Oh, my camera's all kinds of wonky now. I'm sorry, guys. Or am I wonky? No, it's me. I'm all out of line. I know I'm messing with my camera here because I hit it twice. Okay, here we go. Got to pat this dry here. There we go. So if you guys have any questions or concerns, please let me know. So it's the same technique as I did before. This one I'm keeping all blue. Really hug close to that star. But you could do this with any shape. It does not have to be a star. You could do this with a circle, a heart. It's just a masking technique. Um, could you just die cut a star and throw it on top? Yeah, you could. I just like kind of the, the difference. Plus, now I have the star. Oh, that's too. I did that on the other one too. I forgot to tap it off. So I have too much paint right there. It's okay. You can always just make another one, but I'm just showing you the technique. I have a better one that we're going to be making our final card with. So right now it just looks like the same thing. And you could leave the star on there because you can definitely see the star because I've used this twice now. I used it for the, the example version and you could go over the star. So you could use the star for something else too if you wanted to, you could get a two for one deal out of the deal. Now, because I did not use a repositionable adhesive, I would need to pull this off now. Um, and so, or you could wait if you used a repositionable. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. And then there's the star in the center. It's kind of fun. And then you have this piece that you've done more on the outside, minimal on the inside. So it's kind of this cool little embellishment you could use for something else now. So that is something you could definitely, that's why it's been sitting out for all this time. So that's another same technique, just one color now, if you wanted to do the single color. And so here's the one I already did. And of course I did something very similar in terms of making oopsies with my paint, of course. You know, um, and for this one, I'm just doing a straight stamp. What is this, my stamp block? It's hiding. All right, I don't know what I did with the one I was gonna, oh, it's right there in front of me and I just can't see it. 
So I'm just doing a straight stamp and it says, you're a wonderful friend, something that fits within the space that I have. Okay, and now I have the ink padded out. <laughs> All right, no, I did put it away. So I hope you guys are having an amazing summer. So far, we've been pretty busy. The kids have been in camps. And let's see, we went to a water park. That was pretty fun. And then, oh, I don't want to get my hand all wet. This is probably close to dry, but still. You could get out your Misty for this or one of your stamp positioners. That would be awesome. I'm just eyeballing this one. And there it is. You're a wonderful friend. And that would just go on to the card. I think I'm going to come back with a pen. Actually, I can probably do that now if I can find a good pen. I did die cut out another. Here we go. And I think I'm just going to outline very gently. Just give a little bit of something going on here. Just so you can see that star. And it just adds an element of something happening right here. Just freehanding it. It's a star. Not too concerned about making it look perfect. Just following the lines of where I had all my, where I put the thing. I just think it's fun. You could use this technique. I mean, it's paint, right? So because it's paint, could you add this to whatever you want to? Yes. So you could apply this to a canvas. You could apply this to, with the masking, a bag, a tote bag or something. I mean, there's so many things that you can mess with. Oops, sorry. That you could have fun with that. And so this would just, I don't have a card cut for some strange reason. I was one card short. So, but this is another one that you guys can do. Kind of fun, little difference. Look at that. Yeah, so it's just a little bit thicker in this area. That's fine. I, I'm debating, do I want to trim this and make the black mat like I have with all the others? I probably will. And so there is that option. All right. And then the last one, big grand finale. This is, I think is my favorite. It's got the biggest wow factor in my mind. All right. So you're going to take your direct paint again, kind of get some of it off and then start streaking it across. And it doesn't look like it's much. Whoops. Keep going in as much direct line as possible. And because I always seem to start at the edge, sometimes I'll start in the middle. And that's this kind of cool gradient. I'm definitely, I'm gonna switch this because I had my finger there. I wasn't getting a lot of paint in this area. I don't know, it just has this neat kind of, I don't know. It's just cool, whatever you wanna call that. Um, I am going to come in with the blue again because I'm doing blues and greens on pretty much everything and then do the same thing. I think this one of all of them might be my favorite. But I don't know. Depends on what you're fancy. What, what what do you like the most? And you do have to kind of turn it around because you're going to get different. I'm very ha right-handed and so I will saturate the one side and not get the other. Plus, I don't want to mess up and not give this full coverage. You can always trim your paper down though. You don't have to use the full thing. And there it is. Isn't that neat? I just think that one's so fun. I think that's just so cool. Birch bark. That's what it is. It looks like tree bark, but in whatever colors you want it to be. Yeah, that that's that's kind of, I'm like, I know I've seen this pattern before, but I couldn't put my head. So think about it if you did it in grays and blacks, it'd be pretty awesome, right? I'm a blue green girl, so that's what I go with. Awesome. Um, even your pouncing off scratch paper would make, oh, this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> it's just me kind of messing around and playing with that. So that is this one. And so the design I have for this card, and I keep debating, do I want to add the black background? But I think I like the softness of it. All the other ones have added that really harsh black background because I like it. Maybe I'll do it for this one because I have a secondary one. All right, so I am using my little circles here. So this is the two die cut circles and I think I need to center them. And then I have my little hello. So we are going to, and then I'm gonna have to cut them because I want them just to be off a little bit. So oops, I need to get my paper back before I mess up my cards and get them all gross. My little secondary mat, turn my paint sticks around. So we're gonna add our layers of paint. Where's my, there it is. Not paint, sorry, paper. All right, and I didn't bother die cutting these perfectly because I was gonna cut these off anyway as soon as I stuck them onto my card. So it's not a big deal. And this one I'm just gonna use scissors to cut. 
So just lining it up right here. And I have my scissors right there. So I'm gonna flip this over so I can see really well. So just making a nice clean cut. So it's about being off centered, just kind of looks fun. And then I did a little white hello just here in the corner. The initial black circle, I just tried doing one. It just didn't work. And I think I'm gonna come in with a black pen real fast and just do a tiny bit of stitching around here. It's because I wanna add a little something. Oops, this one I've never used. I have these little pens. These pens are from Arteza. These gel pens are so fun. I love them. They're really easy to use. Very, I love, they're kind of got this grippiness on the outside. They're fun. You could also use like some Nugo drops and do like a set of circles and like little drops on the outside. That would be, that would look really pretty as well. I've done that with circles before when you have like layers of circles. I'm doing a really bad job of making a straight stitch, but you know, that's probably what I would stitch if I used a machine too. So <laughs> my stitching's not always perfect and that's okay. There we go. And then adding in the glue. Sorry, just catching up on some of the uh, comments. You guys are very quiet today. I mean, there's some comments, but it's not crazy business. And thank you for no trolls. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you guys know uh, Tiffany Solerio. She has been doing lives. She's kind of, a, she's a friend of mine. She's a really sweet lady. And she had somebody come on to her channel and it was like crazy business. They were doing, saying all kinds of horrible stuff about her and her family, wanting to hurt her and harm her. I mean, it was awful. I mean, I cannot believe somebody would get on and say something like that. It was just, it's kind of freaky because they were like stealing her kids' pictures and it was just, it was nuts. Anyway, so there's this one. So thank you for everybody trolling me. <laughs> Greatly appreciate that one. <laughs> All right. So I hope you guys enjoy the eight different techniques using these fun things from, they're called bunch of balloons or like mass balloons. There's, there was like a name brand and then everybody's probably had their, like their off brand version of the same thing. So this is what they are and just kind of having fun just to recap some of the cool card techniques. Again, I haven't turned this one into a card yet, but we have the star where you're doing the masking, the direct punch, the little spaghetti, the cross hatch, the blowing, the direct, no, this is the, no, this is the direct splatters where you just kind of take it and splatter it, and then the blowing splatters. So all kinds of fun stuff with that. I'm gonna come in and add some fun things. I'll probably add some enamel dots. I think I'll do that right now while we're here. My kids have been behaving very, very well, so I can't go too long. But just to show you guys, these I've had these for forever. These were from Islet Outlet. I don't even know if they have them anymore from years ago, but I think it looks so pretty. So we'll do a mixture of the blue and the green. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. You guys enjoyed some of the fun stuff that I've done today. I appreciate that. So apparently I used all of the middle size on a previous project. So we're going to use the little dots. I'm just going to use three little dots just up here in the corner. Oh, no, you know what? I'm going to do them right here. I have to also make sure that my fingers are not dirty because they're kind of painty. means I've been working hard at my craft, right? There we go. Now do I want to do three down here? Oh, this is the one where I had the paint on the, the glue on the back. So I'll probably have to redo this card, but I don't feel that's centered. I feel like it's off. Here, there it is. Just didn't feel right. Yeah, I'm going to do three down here as well, just to kind of anchor it. So it brings your eye across, but I'm going to alternate the colors. I did blue, green, blue. So I'm going to go green, blue, green. There we go. Ta-da. Look at that. Yay. <laughs> so just little stuff like that is what I'm going to add to some of my other cards. I don't know if some of them need them. You know, do I need to add a little something here in the corner? Maybe one blue, one green to kind of anchor it, you know, something like that. Maybe something like this. It's kind of where I was headed. Just, you know, kind of little final touches that add just a tiny little something and then it just kind of makes it pop. You know, just little stuff like that is what I was thinking about doing. So 
Hope you guys have enjoyed all the fun ideas that I have hopefully inspired you to kind of think outside the box. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, I hit my eight. I want to make sure I didn't leave one out. All using the same tool and then just some paint and water and cardstock. You know, but look at all the fun different techniques and you could totally mix and match. You could take the swirly background that I did here and add it and do that here instead. You could do like the birch bark one could be the background of this. I mean, you could have all kinds of fun, very, very simple cards in terms of design on purpose. So that way you could highlight the kind of the fun background that you made because that's what you spent more time doing. It's not the design of the card where you just pulled out paper from whatever. You made the paper. So you want to make that your highlight and your focus and your kind of the wow factor. So let it shine, have some fun with it. And why not make your own paper? Why not have fun and play and create and use something a little bit different and have some fun with it? I mean, that's, that's the whole part about being creative, right? So again, thank you so much. I will put the links to the supplies down below for the paints and I will find the little balloon things on Amazon for you guys. You guys can find it, but they're, I got them at Costco. I saw them at like our grocery store, our local grocery store. They have them as well. So it's just oodles of fun, oodles of fun. So thank you. Please don't forget to subscribe, share this video with your friends, give me a thumbs up. That would be fantastic. And I will see you guys next week for another live Wednesday, a little bit earlier because camp is shifted. It's earlier. So I cannot jump on at noon, which is actually quite late for me normally, but probably about between nine and 10. I need to look to see what time drop off is. Drop us off is at nine. I cannot do live video at night. So um, I will post to hopefully be able to post ahead of time and we'll come up with another fun idea for some cards. And if you guys ever have any suggestions of ideas that you're interested in, or, Hey, I want to see how Aaron does it. Um, leave a comment. Be happy to hear your answers for that. So thanks so much. Hope you guys have a great day. Try and stay not too hot. And if you're in the Southern hemisphere, don't stay too cold <laughs> and I will see you guys in later. Bye-bye.